Hello and welcome to the Cedric Paley Radio Show. Sports in the mix with the crew. I got my friend, my sister with me on today. Andrea George, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? All right, you sitting up here looking at my background. I know you. <laughs> I know, but I got this big white uh, thing on my screen. Well, I don't know what it oh, is. You got, got it. it. You got it's it. Telling, it's telling. Okay, I got it. Now I got it. Now you see what I got up there, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. The last great moment from the Baylor Bears. We got we got to get rid of all these 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 cliches. Now y'all y'all don't know Andrea is my friend, Fitzational. We have been together for the years. I mean, I met you in Dallas. Was it in the nineties? Uh, is that when it was? We we've been friends for forty one years. Ooh, Jesus, that's a long time. So here's number one. We got we we can't say these words no more. Well, unless we go to the game. No more sickle. No more Sikkim. We started Sikkim with Chelsea Baylor, Ch Chelsea Whitaker at Baylor. Right. And then the other one, me and you would say, go Mavs. Go Mavs. And then we did Sikkim Bears again with Keontae. Yeah. So we can't say the other one no more, you know. So That's we, it. We got to say go Jazz. And, you know, when we was in school back in the day, the Jazz is what was, wasn't always in Salt Lake City. What city were they in, Andrea? You know, I don't know. I, I'm just now learning. I'm learning all the history of the Utah Jazz. So I don't know what city they were in. What they, they was in New Orleans. Remember Pistol Pete? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. the Utah Jazz. That's what it was. I mean, okay, New, well, it makes, New Orleans. It makes Jazz. sense. It makes sense that they have okay. the Jazz as their uh, uh, mascot. Well, let's let's go back. Let's go. Let's go back a few years ago. Your daughter, Chris, was playing basketball. Right. You mentioned Chelsea. Do you remember those AAU players that you had? Because you was out there doing fundraisers. And we was over in Highland Hills area of Dallas, Texas. Yes. And you reached out to me at the station and said, I need Cedric Bailey to come out here and help me raise some money for these kids. Do you remember That's that? That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And I came out there in the headband. And we was out, we was around, I think we was over at the old Bishop College back during that time period before it became Paul Quinn, but it was Bishop. Yes, um, there was a uh, recreation center off of Bonnie View. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's where we worked out. That's where we practiced. And, Singing and that's Hills, where, is that what it was called? Somewhere? Yes, Singing, Singing Hills Recreation Center. Yeah, and we was out there and y'all was washing cars and this little bitty boy was running around. <laughs> You just couldn't help but call his name, Keontae this, Keontae that. He was definitely hanging out with his mama and the team. You remember that? Well, at that time, at Sing you know, at Singing Hills, my daughter wasn't, uh, you know, they were young, so he wasn't born yet. He wasn't born yet, but he was. It was her that was doing the the uh, the basketball. He came along later when she right. was in college. That's what it was. Right. Wow. Oh. That but is he used to time. he used to hang out with he used to I used to take him to the games when she was at Paul Quinn. Yes, that's what it was. And then we went to uh, me and you used to go to the basketball games. We watched Baylor play when Mulkey first started. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was when uh, Marsha Sharp from Texas Tech and Joe right. was with the Longhorn. Right. You and I hung out and went to basketball, and and then I know what it was. Then we went to Seagoville and you got this park and then you had this, just tell us about the journey, how it was all about. Well, when, 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 uh, Keontae was born, you know, my daughter, you know, she was in college. So my husband and I, you know, we, we shared the responsibility of, uh, of taking, uh, care of Keontae while she, uh, played basketball in college and, and continued her education. Uh, she was at, uh, uh, Jarvis in Hawkins, and then she uh, moved to Paul Quinn uh, her second year uh, to continue playing basketball. But uh, you know, my husband and I, we 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 helped her out with uh, taking care of Keontae while she attended school, and uh, and and continued her education and played basketball, finished her basketball career. 
Uh, and we did live in Seagoville, and at Seagoville is where, um, you know, I had purchased um, the park there that had gone into foreclosure, and that's where uh, I developed all my Fit Kids programs with back-to-school programs and all types of summer, summer programs for the kids, and uh, that's where many of the pictures that are circulating now with you interviewing Keontae as a little boy, we had a back-to-school event and had basketball and uh, all these different activities, which you were our DJ and very much a part of, uh, of that activity. And uh, we just, um, just helped with, along with a lot of other, you know, family members, uh, you know, it took a village, but we all managed to uh, help in him and his growth. Uh, it was always about basketball, even though, you know, he tried soccer, he tried, uh, uh, baseball, but uh, everything was basketball. Everything went into his little tiny tot uh, goal from the golf ball to the softball to the tennis ball to eggs. Everything was thrown in that goal, and we knew that that was exactly the direction that he wanted to go. And so we just uh, honed in on that talent. Uh, my husband uh, took him to all his little you know, tiny tot practices and uh, little leagues and things like that. And, you know, work with him and showed him videos of Magic Johnson and Pistol Pete and how they played. And uh, my husband is, was very instrumental in making sure that he understood uh, the, edu the education behind the, the game and how basketball really started and the importance of knowing the skill and the mindset of those those players that were, were very, very, very good uh, in the game. And um, he recently did, a, a at and did an interview with uh, Keontae and my husband, Raul Carrington, um, just a couple of weeks ago, because at the Combine in Chicago, Keontae was asked who was, in, who was instrumental in introducing him to the game of basketball. And he gave my husband the credit and they did a, um, Little, little ad with my husband and Keontae uh, telling the story of how he watched the Pistol Pete and Magic Johnson videos on YouTube to really learn how to play the game, especially from a, a point guard point of view. Wow. Now we got to go back also because there's another person that we got to mention, and that person is your mom, Betty George. Yes. Her and his, her role too as well. Uh, my mom loved Keontae. Um, he used to have a picture of my mom uh, and himself when he was tiny, tiny, one or two years old on his um, social media uh, platform and has just recently, recently just changed the photo about six months ago. But yeah, uh, my mom loved uh, Keontae. She loved, uh, she loved him very much. And my dad, um, he also would always say that there was something about this kid and that he was going to make it. He yeah. was going to be the one George that made it uh, in sports. Of course, all my, my brothers played sports. Yeah. My brother Scotty was drafted right out of high school uh, for baseball. Uh, and then when they drafted him, uh, they sent him to the minor league and they offered him like $27, $2,700, My dad was like, oh, heck no, you're going to college. And so he played for Oklahoma and then played for Texas and um, ended up suffering an injury and, and didn't go any further. But all of my brothers were super athletes. But Keontae, when De Keontae came along, he instantly said, this is going to be the one that makes it. And we're and talking he, about your dad, Mr. Raymond George. Yes, yes. And, and a little bit about him. You guys, the family is from Weatherford, Texas. Right. Before west of Fort Worth. And I had a chance to hang out with you and the family because they did something special in honor of your dad. So share with everybody about what that was about when we went to Weatherford that time a few years ago. Uh, that was at his, um, I think that was his retirement party yes. from South Southwestern Bell. Yes. Uh, after he worked for Southwestern Bell for 47 years. And then when AT&T bought out Southwestern Bell, um, his, his, they offered him a, 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 the, vice, the vice president position. 
but you know, my dad was, he was, he, he was called the telephone pole man. He liked being outside, fixing the, going and up, climbing the pole and repairing the phone lines during the storms and things like that. He wasn't an office, uh, office type person. And uh, once that uh, transition took place and they moved into Fort Worth and um, he just didn't, you know, he retired. And yeah. uh, that's what we went. We went to uh, his retirement party. The Eddie and the Rays also had their little reunion and played at the party. So that that was a really good time. But, and the reason why we're doing all this is because you have to have a family foundation. It's not yes. like overnight. And when right. they up and God called them home, then you stepped it up. And I remember some things I can't say on this broadcast, but your mom spoke some things before the Lord called her home and you followed what she said. And then when she left, here's Keontae becoming a teenager. And I think y'all went to Prestonwood. So can you talk a little bit about how that, that came about? Yes. Um, and uh, during the sixth grade or after um, uh uh, preschool, and then he, he moved to Louisville to, uh, to live with his mom, uh, where he went to elementary school. And then uh, from elementary school, he had an opportunity to go to uh, Prestonwood Christian Academy. And uh, he spent his junior, his middle school years there before he went on to Louisville High School. Um, that was a quantum experience where he, you know, really started developing and honing in on his basketball skills because um, three years there, they won the, you know, private school, uh, you know, state championship for three years. And um, that's when he really started getting recognition for his talent and his skills as well as uh, the other young men that went, went to school there with him. Um, and then once um, he, went to the Chris Paul uh, CP3 camps and started getting, you know, invited to all the Pangos American, all American camps and things like that. That's when people started paying close attention to his skill set, his mindset, and was like, whoa, this kid has the ability to, to, to be big time as long as he stays focused, stay grounded. And uh, we knew what we had to do from then. Did you have some? Some challenges because I remember, I think it was a sophomore year, he was playing for the public schools, playing for Louisville, and they had to go up against Duncanville. What was it like going to that that uh, that monster in that in that level? It, of course, it was it was always a battle. It was a great battle. Uh, Louisville uh, probably did some things uh, that they hadn't done in years. Uh, they went to the playoffs. Uh, both both you know, two years in a row. Uh, it was a great game. Uh, it was not a blowout, uh, but of course the outcome, you know, that powerhouse, you know, they did win in the, um, in, in the, in the, in the playoffs, uh, I believe it was the, the regional or yeah. not regional, but um, somewhere around in that category, they, they made it, it pretty far. Yeah, uh, I think the area, I think you had to get out of the area before you went to the region. And that was the tough thing. People, teams had time. You had a tough time getting out of the area when you went up against uh, a Duncanville. But the opportunity was great. Um, it was it was it was a great time to see a lot of good players um, in, in that arena. Now, and he began to really shine. Now, as a as a, a grandparent, along with his mother, Chris. What kind of conversations would y'all have after the games, Andrea? We really didn't, uh, you know, that's one thing that once Keontae got to a point to where um, I think like his freshman year, he was like, I got this, just let me work. And we really didn't talk about the games. That's one thing that we, we, we tried to talk about other things other than just basketball, yeah. you know, uh, if we, we, he didn't really have any behavioral issues on the court or anything, but if we did see something, you know, that we might thought might come up again, we, we tried to address it, you know, in a professional manner to where he understood how it could affect his career, uh, how people can start to develop opinions about you, uh, at a young age, 
and just talk about talked about care, character, body language, how as he's growing and as he's pursuing college opportunities, those are the things that college scouts are looking at. So we just tried to make sure that we tried to keep him uh, sound in those areas. But as far as anything else, you know, he, he let us know he had the game down. It was a learning process and he wanted to do it his way. Uh, which he did a very good job. Uh, he wanted to he he wanted to figure it out himself. He didn't want anybody else trying to. He didn't want us trying to figure it out. So at some point, he just said, you know, just sit back and enjoy the the game. I got this, and got yeah, he did that. All right. Well, and welcome back here on Sports in the Mix with the crew. I am Cedric Bailey talking with Andrea George Carrington, and we are talking about. A grandson, his name is Keontae, uh, of course, uh, George, and he played college basketball at Baylor. We're going to talk about the college basketball. We got to talk about the draft and all that. But after we left off after Louisville High School, he left the high school and went to another, what was it, academy? Talk about that process from leaving public school and going to another level. And also tell us about the scouts that were showing up to watch him. Okay. Uh, when when he uh, his, after his sophomore year at uh, Louisville High School, he really wanted a little bit more of a challenge. He really wanted to get on that national level. He wanted to play with a team that was playing nationally. And I School of Louisville uh, had that program, uh, and he was he was able to join that team, and that's where he really started working on his game, improving his game because they, they, they were, they traveled uh, just like those national teams. They traveled all around the different States and played in all the big uh, tournaments where the IMGs and the Montverde, all those schools were. And he wanted to challenge. He wanted to see exactly where he was as far as his skill set. He wanted to see if he was just, the same caliber of player as his classmates in that class of 2022. And uh, boy, did he ever, he found out uh, exactly what he wanted to find out. And he just grew from there, um, you know, and then of course playing, you know, summer league basketball, it was always, you know, different scouts, ESPN, all the sports uh, agencies, all the, the, the people started coming out of the woodworks talking about, you know, what a great athlete he is and how he could really make it if he just stayed focused, uh, because of his abilities, um, offensively, defensively, and then just his, his, uh, oh, court awareness. They felt right. like it could, could he, he could be the, he could be one of the ones that make it all the way. So how does that work when you get ready to finish and get your, uh, I, was it through a program through Epic or so to get your classroom so you can graduate? How did all that work? Well, he um, he left high school. Well, um, after his junior year, you know, he had a lot of opportunities um, playing summer league and all the the invites and things that he was doing. And he got an opportunity He'd, all, he'd always wanted to go to IMG as a freshman. He was approached about going to IMG in Florida. But, you know, we just, his mom felt like, you know, well, basketball is just as good here in Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, there was really no need for him to go out of state to play basketball. But he wanted to take it a, a even further. And uh, he got an opportunity to play with a lot of those guys that played at IMG and all of his buddies that he had met at like CP3 camps uh, that were top players, you know, top players in the nation. And he wanted to be part of, he wanted to be playing with those guys. So, um, you know, he just basically told his mom that, you know, I, you know, I want to go to IMG uh, and of course, all those when you when you go out of state like that, you know, of course, you you got to make sure that those opportunities are, you know, taken care of financially for him, not only for him, but for his mom, because that that's a big jump. And, uh, you know, he's a good salesperson. He's always sold us on 
first of all, he always says, I prayed about it. And God says, I can do this. So how do you fight with that? How do you, how do you come back on that? You know, because, you know, he's, he's the spiritual component in his life is probably the most important component uh, in his life. And so, you know, when he put it that way, we already knew, you know, you're not just saying that just to get, to get to go. You're, you really, he really means that he prays about it and he knows it's going to work out. So, you know, next thing I know, they're telling me they're going to Florida uh, to IMG. And, um, you know, all I could say was, well, if that, you know, if that's what he wants to do, then that I knew that's what he wanted to do because he knew being at IMG was really going to put him, uh, could put him at the top of uh, the chart as far as recruiting. Well, let's and talk being, about the recruiting on that because I want to know how, what were the, what was his top three schools and why did he pick Baylor? Uh, I believe his top three schools were Baylor, Kansas, um, and I believe Texas Tech. And what did you, what was you hoping? You know, it, it didn't really matter. I, you know, I think Texas was part of that. I think it was Baylor, Texas, and Kansas, because Baylor was a surprise pick. We thought he was going to go to Texas. And then once he visited Baylor, that changed everything um i think with baylor you know i i i really don't know a lot of the you know on those schools and things like that you know it's basically him and his mom uh on those tours and um you know so i really didn't get in depth with the conversations on on what they were having they were just but like, I know, I know, with, I know with Baylor, it was close to home because he had been in Florida his whole year. It was close to home. Um, that program, that program with Scott Drew and um, Coach Tang was there at the time, uh, and of course they had won a national championship, and they have a track record record of producing uh, point guards that go into the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a that was the the best program that could really benefit benefit him the most. He knew going in that he was going to be he wanted to be a, a a one year player. He already knew that, and he wanted to be somewhere that would totally get him prepared for the next level. And Baylor had all that, you know, with their staffing, with their training, with their development, uh, with all the tools that they have. Um, and then of course we had, you know, close relationship with uh, one of the, the coaches there that had, had really been uh, friends of a family since he was in the eighth grade. So that, that having a relationship is a big deal as well. And uh, once he visited Baylor uh, and it, it's all about how you take care of you, 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 he, he has a sense. He knows when you're being honest and he knows when you're just telling him something just to try to get him to do something. So right. he sensed that Baylor was for real. Baylor was the real deal. Wow. And, you know, I was, uh, you know, when I go to all the different basketball games, uh, I, I hang out with this guy named Jerry, who is a writer for Sikkim Sports there in Waco uh, for uh, Baylor. And uh, mm -hmm. I said, well, we got, we got one of our kids, a friend of mine's kid's going to be going to school down there. And, and the mom's name is Chris and grandmother's name is Andrea. Oh, you talking about Keontae George? He says to me, well, said he's going to be one and done. I said, you sure about <laughs> that, Jerry? <laughs> he said, yeah, I'm sure. We'll be blessed to have him for one year. And, yeah. uh, you know, so talk to us about being at the Farrell Center and those games. I mean, being there at the Farrell, I mean, it was like when you go in there, they got all that legacy at, at, at Baylor, yeah. you know, but what was that journey like? It, it was, it was the greatest family atmosphere of any arena that I've ever been in. Uh, you know, they don't sell alcohol in the Feral Center. Uh, so you just, like I said, 
you saw the greatest family atmosphere. You didn't have people cursing at the at the players at the stand. You saw an abundance of kids and and older uh, older you know people. Their fan base um, is just incredible. Uh, the loyalty, you know, of the people that are there, the, the people that, you know, people that went to school there that come back. I mean, they live, they live, you know, four or five hours away that drive back for those games, uh, win or lose the atmosphere was just always incredible. And, and that was just amazing. But, you know, I, I felt like the most important, impressive thing to me was the amount of kids at those games um and again like I said the atmosphere uh was just was just incredible you know it's so amazing they have so many people to give back one thing about Baylor uh alumni you know of course Greg yeah football coach Mulkey was there uh of course Scott Drew there and then you got McLean Stadium I mean these right give back in such a big way. And you're right, their student base. As a matter of fact, Kirk Franklin's uh, daughter, so he went, went to school down there. One of his, uh, Kaziah, one of the kids went there. So once you become a part of the Baylor Bears Sikkim uh, Foundation, it, it's a, a lifetime moment. We saw what they did with RG3, with Robert Griffin. Right. Third, you know, and so I'm just imagine. So what happens when you went to away games? Like to, did you go down there to uh, Austin, uh, to the Urban Center, or what out of town games did you go to? Um, I went to. Um, I didn't get a chance to go to to Texas. That that game was a uh, that game was a sellout, and I think it was a. You know, they played at Baylor, and then I think a couple of days later they went to Texas, and uh, that game it was a sellout. But their like I said, their fan base they travel. Uh, they travel in groves, you know, it didn't matter where it was. Baylor always, you know, they always had a section. They always had their, their, their alumni that, that travel, they traveled very large. Um, so, but I went to Iowa state. I went to uh, Oklahoma you know, I'm a, I, you know, I, I, I like to go to the games where, where, where you can drive. I don't fly well. Uh -huh. um, just the different, different atmospheres uh, throw me off. Like when we got to New York, uh, the conditions in New York uh, were just with, 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 with all the trash and all the, 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 the sewage coming up. It, I was sick for, I was in bed for the first day I got there because I was so sick with just sinus. So I don't, I don't fly well. I enjoy watching the games on the TV because I like to listen to the commentators and I get a very, I get a, I get a better view on, on the TV. I really do. I really enjoy staying home and watching, watching the games. Um, yeah on the TV. And you know me, I'm a social media uh uh person. I like comment and I like, you know, loading up pictures and, you know, I, I like, you know, presenting the information about the game um at the time that it, it that it's happening. Um so uh but other than that, when I am at the games, it it's 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 a really, really good um uh, good atmosphere. Well, after they, uh, thank you for sharing that. So after they played in the NCAA tournament, um, I think they went out to Creighton. Is that who they lost to? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what was it like to watch him make the tournament? Because nobody saw it coming like it did this year. I mean, we watched Arkansas play. They got blew out. And Oh, I know. I Everybody's mean, bracket was blown. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was just something else. Even the number one seeds did make it to the final, you know? I know. It was crazy. Yeah. You know, that that's a, that, you know, it's kind of like the draft. You, you never know, you know, all the predictions in the world, but it can go, go any kind of way. And it's, it's just a matter of, 
you know, I like the underdog. I like the underdog. You know, UConn was the underdog and they came through and they beat everybody along the way. But it, it was it was great experience. I'm glad that Keontae got a chance to experience that because now he has experienced basketball at every single level and every single opportunity uh, he has had. So he can never say, I wish I had a, been able to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, any any chance that you get an opportunity to be amongst your your peers and considered, you know, some of the best or one of the best or whatever, um, win or lose, you know, you were there. It was a lot of teams that didn't make it, but 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 they made it. They well, there made were at least it. was there at least six or eight teams out of the Big Twelve that made it in basketball. Yes, that was, and there's ten teams in the in the in the right. Big Twelve. But I mean, ten teams. I, I think the shocker was Kansas State too, as well. Is that right? Yes, they yeah they lost. Kansas, but Kansas lost. Yeah, uh, Kansas didn't. Uh, oh, you didn't make it. I know they didn't make it. Right. Yeah. But Kansas State, they they did very good. Um, Texas, man, what about their coach at Texas? That guy did a credible job. Yes, he did. He did. He did a heck of a job taking over at the time that that he did. Yeah, and that keeping when Chris the, Brown got in trouble, the uh, the coach there. I think yeah. Was, yeah, when he got in trouble. Yeah. So it was it was a tough conference, and they were battling back and forth. So what did the people say at Baylor when he left and when it was all over? What kind of feedback did you get? Um, I think they they all knew that that they knew coming in that he was a one and done. It was it was understood from the very beginning. Um, you know, a lot of people really wanted to see him him stay one more year. Um, you know, there's a lot of feedback. They thought he was too young. Um, uh, you know, they thought he needed a little bit more development, um, you know, another year under the Baylor system. But he was ready. He, uh, you know, when you have somebody that has the mindset of a, all his life of being a professional basketball player, a, a professional, um, Everybody, I think everybody that plays college basketball at that level, they have those same um, desires. He had, but to have the desire as strong as he had, um, I don't think he had the patience for, for another year. He was ready, he was ready and he knew that once he got the opportunity, once he made the commitment, he knew what he needed to do to make it happen. Yeah, well, he definitely. And he was, he was ready to that. He was ready to be in a more professional atmosphere with, 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 whatever, with everything that comes with that, professional staffing, professional uh, trainers, uh, being amongst professionals like to be amongst professionals. Wow. And he, that, that's what he wanted. And that's what, that's where he is. Um, and he hit the ground once that season was over, he hit the ground running. Uh, he, he went to where he needed to be to start getting the best training, uh, get his nutrition program under, under tack, get his, get his management team together to get his whole team together, he was really ready for that. Um, and my husband told him, he said, you only owe me one thing. Okay. He said, you have to promise me that you will get your degree. Yeah. You know, he said, the season is only for so long. He said, I don't care how long it takes you. I mean, look at JR. Steph Curry. Steph, you look Steph at Curry. Steph Curry. You know, all those guys There's got their degree. So yeah. That's it. All right, well, hold, that with, thought, hold that thought. We got to come back. We're talking okay. about friend, Andre George about Keontae, and I'm letting my sister shine her light. Y'all <laughs> listen to take notes.
And welcome back. Segment three here on the VGC Sports Network. We're talking about the NBA draft. We're focusing in on Keontae George. He was from Dallas, Texas, by way of Siegelville, by way of Louisville, by way of, of course, Baylor. And we're talking to his grandmother, Andrea George, a good friend of mine. And now, Andrea, we got to talk about the draft, what it was it like getting prepared to go to New York. Because I know people was blowing your phone up, your social media. <laughs> but let's, let's hear about your journey uh, to, of course, there with the commissioner, Alvin, Adam Silver, and the NBA draft? Well, of course, you know, once he left Baylor, he went straight to Orlando to start training. Uh, and then from, then from Orlando, he went sh- to the Combine in Chicago. And then uh, from the Combine, he went straight to L.A., which is where his agent office is. So there was just a stop in Dallas or in in where his mom lives in Louisville area or um, Crowley to repack and move on so uh, I didn't really I didn't get a chance to see him I mean he was just in one day and flying out the next day uh, all part of this process and uh, of course you know as he's getting invites um, he went a whole spent a whole week the last week before the draft you know, he went to, he flew to Toronto. Um, there's a day in between that. Then he flew to New Orleans, a day in between that. Then he flew to uh, Utah. Where, and then um, he was supposed to come back to Dallas well, on that Sunday or come back. He was supposed to go back to L.A. Well, on that Sunday, he got a call from Oklahoma. They wanted him to bring him in for a workout. So that whole week he spent just working out for teams. Um, and so, and of course, just waiting on, um, waiting on that, you know, that invite for the green room, you know, uh, which was a big deal because even though you go through all this process, you go through the, the, the combine and you go through all these workouts and you hear all of the, the conversation about, you know, you're going to, he's going to go, you know, 10, 11, 12, whatever, five, whatever. Uh, but until you get that invite into the green room, you don't really know uh, what you're going to be doing. And I remember he called, he FaceTimed me and my husband uh, one afternoon. And, and I told my husband uh, when he FaceTimed, I said, it's at some point, you need you need to hear from the people the original crew you need to hear from he calls those makama and dodo you he needed to hear from he needed to this is what he said i miss y'all i needed to see y'all's face yeah and that's all we needed to hear and he said i'm really nervous i hadn't got my invitation yet and i said i tell you what we're going to pray that that invitation comes this week. Yeah. And he said, okay. And then he just, you know, him and my husband, you know, just started talking and cutting up and just talking about some things that they were getting ready to do with AT&T. But, you know, grandparents, you know, when the actual parents are involved, the hardest thing for the grandparent is to take a back seat. Yeah. But, you know, I did that. I knew when it was time for me to sit back, let God work it out, let my daughter be there. Because sometimes between the mother and the daughter, especially when you've been involved in raising the child, there can be conflict. Yeah. But this was not the time for conflict. I knew my place. I always knew my place. And I've always stayed in my place. No matter how bad I wanted to say something, I would always say, you know, you might want to approach it this way or you might want to do this. I know you're going to do things your way. Yeah, I'll give you my opinion. opinion. Right. But um, I I always have always stayed in the background. I've always known my place. But I just, you know, I just prayed. I just, you know, I just like I just prayed my it's almost like I prayed his way through through this draft because I knew that's what he wanted he didn't want to be at home he didn't want to be at the hotel 
he wanted to be in that green room. And as things, you know, started shifting with all the, when you, when they start doing all the trades, different trades, it really affects the draft picks. When teams start trading and start moving pieces around, it can affect where you end up. Yeah. And uh, that's why I started telling him, you know, it doesn't matter where you go. You've always just shown up and done your job. Just, you know, you've always just shown up. And I had to just remind him of, you know, when you played the three on three FIBA, you know, when you got invited, you know, who would have thought that you would be in another country and y'all beat every team and then you end up being the MVP. I said, that's, you have to think back on those things that no matter where you went or where you go, you're going to be Keontae. So it doesn't matter what number you go, when you go, where you go, Keontae is going to always be Keontae. Yeah. And uh, so those are the things that I just kept, you know, putting in his ear. And then of course, uh, once he got his invitation, then I knew, okay, it's, it's, it's on, it's just going to be a matter of, you know, where he goes. And of course it, it didn't matter where he went because he was in the place that he wanted to be. All right. So let's go ahead. Now we already know that the kid from San Antonio was number one and mm -hmm. Scoot, Scoot was number three, but as it got closer and closer, and of course, Utah had two first round picks and mm -hmm. got, what was the other player's name that they got at what at number nine spot or so? The other kid for uh, Taylor, Taylor. So uh, was, Taylor cool. Hendricks, I think. Yeah, that's his name. That's what his name was. Yeah. So, yeah. so he went and then later on, we we get to 16 and you started noticing things going on. So why right. do that? Because y'all up in the stands, Chris is at the table and his people are at the table. So walk us through when that happened. Well, my daughter was telling me that, you know, at one point he dropped his head down almost to the table and I texted her and I said, what's wrong? And she said, he's just getting a little nervous because all his, all his friends had already been drafted. And I saw her push, you know, lift his head back up. And she said, he's almost there. And, you know, like I said, when you're there, you can see all the moving pieces. You can see when the cameraman are going to a certain table, you know, okay, this is, this is his, you know, this is his time. But at one point when they were getting ready to draft the New Orleans, this was the, the, the freakiest thing when New Orleans was getting ready to pick, you know, all the movement started towards his table. And everybody was like, okay, this is it. Everybody was in the stands was like, this is it. This is it. This is it. Well, next thing we know, somebody comes to his table and this guy squats down. He, he's saying something. And all of a sudden, the team moves somewhere else. And we're like, oh, my God. No, they did not do that to him, you know. And uh, so and then after that, pick then you know you see the cameraman going back over there to him and uh uh my my daughter's uh sister uh on her dad's side she said he's emotional and I said what and he said and then I saw him on the phone and she said it's go time yeah so I everybody's like got their camera like ready yeah. you know, and everything. And sure enough, when they said, you know, the number 16 pick, you know, the Utah Jazz choose picks Keontae George, you know, that place went wild. Yeah. And it was crazy because at that moment, well, I thought I was filming it, but when I went back and looked <laughs> you dropped at phone. my phone I went into a total praise yeah I had I did not even know that I had done that yeah I went into a total praise and my phone was recording the ground <laughs> <laughs> you thought she was at Ibach yeah <laughs> hey when the Holy Spirit hits you you just you you know ain't no shame in my game she thought you know. she was at Friendship West. Y'all <laughs> know where she went to church at. 
Yeah. And I know, I know that she helped them, these young people in the, in the moment back in the day when you helped those kids, that's why we told the story. But when your own, your own, right. Your name, George there, it's like, God, you did this. And he walks around, he takes a moment, he hugs everybody, but he stops and he looks up and what does he say, do before he goes up on there and stays? And, and, it, and, I, and I caught this because like I said, I was in such a, it's such a praise. I never saw him look up at us because when we got there, my daughter said, where are y'all? And we look, I said, look straight up and we waved and he waved. So he knew exactly where we were. And after he dapped up everybody and hugged everybody, as he was going up the steps, he turned and looked, and then he went up the steps. Now, I didn't see that until I saw the video, the, the video again. But, you know, the one thing about it, like I said, the, 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 the crowd went wild as if he had, like, done a slam dunk over, like, the whole uh, team. Yeah. And, I, and I said at that moment, I said, when I watched it again, I said, you know, it's, it, it wasn't, I said for, for everybody in that arena to at, react, it wasn't about the player. It's about the person. Yeah. It was about the person that everybody fell in love with. Yeah. Well, Keontae George. Well, I, I, and I got Go ahead. I'm sorry, because I got four minutes left to wrap this okay. up. Okay, but, but that pleased to me. That pleased to me more than anything. Wow! Because you have won the heart of the people. Yes. Well, listen. Now, this is the most important part. I got three minutes left for this. The press conference that took place on Monday. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. How how you felt about him answering all the questions from the media there in Salt Lake City. You know, I, I, I was so impressed, so happy. He sat down at that table like he had been there before. Very professional. But you know why he was able to do that? Because when he was a little boy and he played video games, he did his own press conference. <laughs> he sat at the table, he asked himself the questions, he answered the questions, and my husband and I would practice with him on a press conference. He'd say, ask me this. Really? Yes, yeah, so we practice. We have practiced the press conference. Don't say, uh. Yeah. Concentrate, think about what your answer before you answer. And it was Perfect, spot on. He answered the question. He didn't avoid any question. It was almost like he answered the question so perfectly. It was almost like he had the questions in advance before he answered it. And I was like, oh my God, this kid is just, he's a grown, he's grown up. He's a grown man, you know? He he's it's like he's been here before. Wow. But he 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 rehearsed his whole career. He rehearsed it. Wow. I, so now he's gonna prepare for the uh Utah League and then he's going to the NBA Summer League. Summer and, League, yes. And we'll be watching that too. And I hope you get a chance to make it to Vegas, Andrea. Oh, I, I will be in Vegas, no doubt about it. Yeah, that's a good place to go. <laughs> I, I will be, I will, I will be in Vegas. Um, you they know, have, they haven't even released the NBA schedule yet. Cause I looked in there. So that means they're going to at least play Dallas at least twice here. And then they'll play them twice there. So when the schedule come out, I will be there some kind of way. And I'm going to, I'm going to be looking for you. I know Raul, he's a photographer. I can just yes. imagine what all his digital slides look like. He's got more yes. to do. Well, he talked about when he did his interview with AT&T, he talked about the fact that uh, Raul was responsible for, for helping him to build his profile as he grew up, which, which he did. Um, we, we went through pictures when ESPN and AT&T were asking for photos. You know, he just had 
you know, USB of saved photos. And we were just, re that's why I was sending you stuff that I was sending you because we were looking back at all those pictures from the past. Wow. But uh, it's very important that you keep your child's, you know, live life. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, listen on, vi on video and on, on photo. Yes. Well, listen, we're out of time. I want to say thank you for hanging out with us here on the BGC Sports Network. You guys be sure to share this. You got the whole show because we love you so much. And our people, please share this link. Let everybody know that good things come to those who work hard. Parental involvement means the world. Chris, God bless you. I yes. look forward to seeing y'all in person. And I hadn't talked to Key in a while. And I'm pretty sure he remembers me because I, I really never tried to say too much. I just wanted to, yeah. to keep notes but I will be seeing him. Andrea, you get the last word. I, I just want to thank you, my friend. Uh, you, you have been there from when you talk about day ones, you are definitely, oh my God, I throw a party for my day one. You, <laughs> you are definitely that, the day one, but I thank you. Uh, you've been on this journey with us and, and I look forward uh, to what, uh, God is going to uh, bless Key with uh, in the future at Utah. Uh, I pray over him at Utah. You know, we have to pray over our young young babies when they go to these different different states and different arenas uh, because the devil is busy. Yeah, and uh, everybody's not always for you, but I I pray that he'll let his light shine and uh, and he'll he'll just do his thing. And I pray that the people that are around him. Uh, Yaya, she's there with she's there with him for him, um, protects him, and is you know she's a helper. She's a very good helpmate, and I pray for her and I thank God for her as well. And my daughter, yeah. um, she is she's just a jewel. She has yeah. she has uh, stood the test, the test of time. All right, well we're gonna close it out on three. So you know what we got to say now. Okay, here we go. One, two. Three, go jazz. Go jazz, go jazz. <laughs> go jazz. <laughs>